Hi there, this is David, and welcome to my review of Lost Eidolons, released for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Before we begin, I would like to thank Ocean Drive Studio for providing me with a free copy for a review. And I will also say this. Whenever they emailed me and reached out to me, I was very hesitant to accept because with just a modicum of research, I could tell that this was not something that I would normally play. I mean, look at it. You can tell that this is definitely a Western RPG. But the developers assured me that I would enjoy it and that it would be my type of game. So I took a leap of faith and here I am. I'm actually quite glad that the developers kind of talked me into it, because this is essentially like a Western Fire Emblem. It's sort of like Dragon Age meets Fire Emblem. It's exactly what you would think it would be if like Bethesda or some other Western studio produced that classic. Personally, the last Western RPG that I played was Dragon Age Origins, so yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've stuck my foot into that particular pool, but I am glad that I took the plunge, as this takes a page out of that newer Fire Emblem's books, allowing you to choose one of three different difficulty modes, the ability to turn off permadeath, and being able to either skip or greatly speed up all battle animations. Little tiny improvements like this just make such a huge difference in the enjoyment of the game for me. The music's very fitting. It's kind of middle agey renaissance, and it reminds me a little bit of like the Bard's Tale, along with some pretty decent voice acting too. Mechanically, this is a turn-based strategy RPG with a storyline based straight in politics. You play as Eden, the leader of a band of ragtag mercenaries, but they quickly go from small town heroes to fugitives on the run after they're falsely accused of treason. But then they actually really murder one of the local lords, so they really gotta go on the run and then they join up with the true resistance fighters to topple the entire empire and free the people from their yoke. After a while, I kind of felt like I was playing like a live action Game of Thrones with all the twists and turns that were being thrown at me. I'm sure that just about all of you have probably played a Fire Emblem game, so you know exactly what you're going to be getting into here. But there are a few little twists here. Instead of the tried and true weapon triangle, here you need to look at the type of armor that your opponent's wearing and then hit them accordingly. For example, if they're wearing heavy armor, you're going to want to use an axe. Leather armor, use a sword, and then cloth armor, they want piercing attacks, like those from a bow or a spear. Now, that's for the human enemies, not for the monsters. They work entirely differently. Monsters are much more powerful than the humans, and they have like double the health as well as randomly changing weaknesses. Each turn, you're going to get to see what the monster is vulnerable to, and then you're going to have to attack those vulnerabilities to weaken and then eventually break them down so that you can deal some respectable damage. Monsters are definitely a challenge here, and they are a much more strategic fight. I really enjoyed the way that they kept combat familiar and accessible, while also at the same time being different enough to be its own thing. It's experimental without being like off the wall. Terrain is interactive as well. When you cast a fire spell on a bush or a tree, it'll catch light and burn any target standing in it. Similarly, if you stand in a puddle, then you'll get the wet status, reducing your combat effectiveness and making it so that you can take more damage whenever you're struck by lightning. That being said, you can also target a wet tile with fire to dry it out, and conversely, a dry tile will turn wet with a water spell, and if you use an ice spell, then the whole thing will just freeze over. You have plenty of spells too with the spellbook system. Here, you can see what spells are available and inscribe them into your book, EverQuest style. I loved the throwback, and all the interactive terrain reminded me so much of that classic Bahamut Lagoon. Your soldiers each have a weapon specialty as well as an off-handed weapon, and you can easily switch between the two as the situation applies. Using a sword for close combat, or a bow to attack from afar, ensures that everybody is useful at all times. Add to that an extensive class changing system, and you've got the foundations of a deeply customizable game and team. There's a kind of neat turn limit system too. Basically, you're given a very generous amount of turns to complete the battle. 
but the fewer turns that you use, the more experience you end up gaining. So it really does behoove you to make the most out of every single action and not pussyfoot and drag ass around the battlefield. You gotta hit the ground running and beat those bitches up on the double. Now, you might be thinking that the entire game is just battles followed by cutscenes, but it's really not. You'll be spending just as much time out of battle in your camp talking and bonding with your party members. Utilizing your leadership points in much the same way that you would bond with your party members in like a trails game. You can give gifts or have dinner to increase their friendship values, find books to open up more conversation options, and complete quests for them as you get to know them better. Then, as you get more renown, people will show up in the camp and then you can recruit them. And rarely merchant will show up selling hard to find goods. You never really know what you're going to find in your camp, but with fast travel, a mini map, and icons to help you find your way, you'll be able to complete everything there is without much hassle. Now, it's here in camp that one fatal flaw really does rear its ugly head. I've talked about this before, and it seems like an epidemic in many recently released games, but my god, look at that font size. What is that? Is that like a four point font? I don't know what it is lately, but it's like developers are in a competition with each other to see who can implement the smallest font and get away with it. In the voice acted scenes from the story, it really doesn't matter, but many of the conversations inside the camp are not voiced. And this 40 year old gay man is not about to get some crow's feet or wrinkles trying to read all that mess. Other than that though, it's a really solid game and I did enjoy my time with it. So that's it for my review of Lost Idolans. How did you feel about the game? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me over on Patreon, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, or join the Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them all can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.